News Review with Hugh Pym of the BBC and Jane Moore of The Sun. Let's start with the front pages of the paper. And that message you are hearing from the news headlines, very clear from the government on the front page of the Sunday Express, stay safe, but hit the high street. And then the Mail on Sunday, the big picture there of the riots. Yes, we'll talk about that. Prime Minister takes charge on the two-metre rule. That's going to become absolutely essential now. Thousands of businesses will go under if that rule is not changed. But, of course, the, the medical advice is very much to stick to one metre at the moment. Uh, there's the sun on Sunday. Shameful, it says. Six cops hurt in violent demos. Um, similar sorts of pictures on the front page of the Sunday Telegraph. But they're suggesting that the government's looking at 10 years in, sorry, 10 years in jail for protesters who desecrate war memorials. A lot of people will like that idea. Uh, the Sunday Times going with a very different story here. It says the Prime Minister is going to scrap plans to make gender change easier, this self-identification idea. We're having a culture war in this country at the moment, and that will certainly set off another round of it. And then finally, the Observer is focusing on another really big story today, uh, the future of education as the schools do not reopen. And it's talking about the Children's Commissioner for England is very, very worried about the risk to the rights of children to a basic education is now being impugned. Uh, Hugh, let's start with you. The message is very clear. Go out and shop, but do go out and shop in England, but do so safely. What does that actually mean, do you think, safely? Well, that's right, Andrew, and it's very much a message from ministers. Go out and do your bit for the British economy. Go out and start shopping tomorrow in England. It's already possible in Northern Ireland. It means stick to the two-metre social distancing rule. There'll be all sorts of signs inside the shops. There'll be clothing shops, bookstores opening and others. Blobs on the floor and all of that. Exactly. Hand yeah. sanitizers, uh, members of staff to guide you round, uh, limits to the number of people who can go in at any one time uh, in clothing shops and bookshops. Uh, products which are picked up by people will then be set aside to be quarantined. So quite a big change for people to get used to. And, and of course, uh, it isn't all shops opening. It's those who choose to do so, a sort of slow reintroduction. And I suppose the really big question is, will people do it? Because there was an ONS survey suggesting that around 30% of people think in England thought it was still too unsafe to leave their own houses. And if they're not, leave, not leaving their own houses, they can't shop. Indeed. I mean, they will online shop as much as they yes. can. But um, in terms of getting out to the high street, there are many shops that don't do online offerings and want to promote uh, their presence. The smaller shops will want people to get out and save high streets. The Sunday Express uh, has its own Save Our High Streets campaign. So the message will be to try and get out there. But if people don't feel they want to do so, then they'll, they'll vote with their feet uh, in reverse, if you like, and, and, and not go out to the shops. Hugh, you were also an economics correspondent for a while, and you wrote a book on the 2008 financial crash. So how do you compare this with that? Well, I was checking the figures. There was this extraordinary fall in output to GDP in April of 20%. The three months up till April uh, was down 10%. In the banking crisis, we never saw in that recession anything more than 2% in a single quarter. So something unprecedented, never before been seen in modern British economic history. But the hope is there'll be some sort of bounce back. Of course, with all shops closed during March and April, uh, you'd hope for some sort of bounce back when shops reopen. But I think it's going to take some time. That's what forecasters have been saying. Jane Moore, we're still leading news bulletins on those protests in London, and they're in every single paper, and announcements from the government about things they might do. Just take us through. I think the, f the front page of the Mail on Sunday has that big picture, which is fairly yes. horrifying. Well, yeah, they've got the, the, the big picture and it says, what has become of the tolerant Britain we love? Well, the answer, of course, is that, you know, what has been ostensibly a peaceful protest uh, up to now has yet again been hijacked by a violent faction. And this time, as we saw over the weekend, it's the far right. Um, and, you know, I really just think that the police need to really clamp down on this violent faction and get back to what was the original message of these pro protests, which of course was against pr pr police brutality. That has now, that message seems to have got lost. And we have these, well, I can only describe them as thugs dominating the headlines. Um, now it, it all sort of centers of course around the argument about statues, particularly statues in central London over the weekend, which statues should remain standing, which statues should be taken down. And there's a superb piece in the Mail on Sunday by um, Sir Jeff Palmer, OBE. He's a, a professor at, um, of life sciences. And he says, you know, 
that history cannot be changed. He said, it's most certainly can't be changed through violence and destruction. And he said, racism, which is a consequence of this history, can and must be challenged. But he said, in terms of the statues, let's educate people. He said, if you remove the evidence, you remove the deed. So again, it just brings us back to this thing of let's have debate, let's have, you know, statues, certain sure. statues taken down if people want them taken down by democratic means and not by mob rule. And of course, history is complicated and subtle. Statues are not. But it was very, very interesting yesterday, to say the least, to see a man with a swastika tattooed on his chest allegedly defending the war memorial. Well, exactly, yes. I mean... We rest our case, Your Honour. <laughs> now, um, another big story I think you've picked out is about education. Gavin Williamson, the Education Secretary, can't be enjoying this morning's papers very much. He is no. criticised in many of them, including the Sunday Times, but also on the front page of The Observer. Yes, uh, the Children's Commissioner for England, Anne Longfield, has, has basically pointed out what I think is, is pretty been obvious to most of us for quite some time, is that we were just talking then about education is that, you know, readers make leaders, etc. Uh, there's a whole generation of children here that are not in school. Now, initially, that was fair enough. But I think now the government really need to do some joined up thinking. And, and Anne Longfield is warning here, you know, there's what three fairly young years that have gone back. But mm -hmm. my daughter had her GCSEs cancelled now in many ways that's okay because by the time they'd already done their mocks they were pretty much prepared for their exams and they were just doing the sort of reinforcing of, of information but the year below her that is when you learn the majority of what you need to know for your GCSEs and your A-levels sure. and those years are not back at school so we have 700,000 children I think I read the other day who are not in the on online learning system and those children, when they go back to school, they're already socially disadvantaged. They're going to be even more so. And that's what Anne Longfield is warning. Mm. She's saying here that next year's academic year could also be seriously yeah. hit. I guess the problem is that we need to make sure at the same time that these schools are going to be safe for teachers and for students. And there has been some evidence of COVID passing during schools. You can see why a lot of teachers did not want those schools to reopen. Yeah, but I would argue also that I think with the older years, then social distancing measures are easier to implement mm. than they are, say, with reception year. That's a very fair point. Uh, Hugh Pym, last week I asked the question rhetorically, what's happened to the NHS app? I think we've got some answers from The Telegraph this morning. Yes, and in, in fact, during the week, we asked Matt Hancock at the Downing Street briefing, and it was, we'll bring it on when we, the time is right. For the moment, we're, contact, we're, we're, we're concentrating on human uh, track and trace, the test and trace programme. But yes, the app was very much part of the original plans, and uh, the Sunday Telegraph has picked up on this and quoted a senior official working on the app, saying they're not hearing enough from Downing Street about what's really going on. It's still being trialled on the Isle of Wight. They had initial problems there in terms of how they linked up tests with the app. The app's there to trace people who may have come into contact with someone who's infected. And uh, there are question marks being raised over Bluetooth, the, the yeah. platform that makes all this work. So it doesn't seem to be an imminent part of the government's test and trace programme in England, should we it's say. It's basically not working yet. And yet we were told at the beginning of all of this it was absolutely essential to making track and trace work, wasn't it? Yes, and it's now being called the icing on the cake, yeah. so that the emphasis has definitely changed. I think in Whitehall and in Downing Street and the Department of Health, there's certainly a lot of caution about rolling this out nationally mm -hmm. in case it all goes uh, terribly wrong. So certainly not uh, a key part of test and trace at the moment, which yeah. uh, has recently been rolled out. Indeed, Hugh. Um, Jane, front page story on the Sunday Times about the gender transitioning rules. Now, call me suspicious, but A, talk us through the story, and B, let me ask, do you see the fluttering of a kite being flown here? Do you think it's a real story and actually this is something that is definitely going to happen or do you think it's a useful distraction? Well, I think there's a little bit of both in that. I mean, uh, it, it's basically saying that Liz Truss will be announcing this uh, at the end of July, just before um, the government break up for summer and recess. Announcing what exactly? Uh, well, it's uh, first of all, um, those who wish to change their birth certificate will meet will will need medical approval because there was um, 
suggestion wasn't there that you could just self-identify. You will need medical approval. Uh, the second part of that, they say they're going to crack down on quack doctors, by which I assume they mean a doctor that will just sign off medical approval without sort of doing due diligence, if you like. Um, third part of it is that they are going to safeguard uh, or try and protect safe spaces for women. So I'm presuming that would be lavatories, prisons, etc. cetera. Um, lavatory provision is another one of it. And I think, you know, the thing that will be most welcome of all is a ban on those sort of ghastly gay cure therapies that some churches and organizations advocate. Uh, finally, Jane, I was talking about the number of people who may face uh, losing their jobs later this year as the, the economy tanks. But there's a very interesting poll in The Sun on Sunday suggesting most of us don't believe it will happen to us. I was absolutely astonished by this. 67% think that the economic meltdown will not affect them. And that is delusional because, um, you know, any sunny day, any city in the country you drive around now, look at the parks, everyone's out having a lovely picnic, having a lovely time. No one blames them. You know, we all want to be there. And a lot of them are there not by choice, but because they, are, they can't actually work. But if they think that they're going to get this 10 weeks of just having a lovely time and then go back and everything's going to be fine, I'm afraid it is not. And, uh, you know, I, I've had so many emails, you know, companies get your email addresses, don't they, when you go there for dinner or whatever. So many restaurants emailing saying, could you buy a voucher now if you yeah. want to eat here yeah. in the future? Clothes shops, could you buy a voucher? There is, there is a serious economic crash coming, I, I, I think. It's just a slight sense that we are all enjoying a sunny, balmy, hugely relaxed fool's paradise at the moment. Jane Moore yes. and Hugh Pym, thanks both very much indeed. The weather next.